Okay, so we have two more types of problems that we have to do in 4.4, and I'm going to lump them actually into this one video because this first one's super easy. Um, so let's do that then. So this first one comes from uh, 4435, and it's essentially it's to determine the span of V1 comma V2, and Sorry that you guys have to read my handwriting. It's actually, it's, it's Garbo. Uh, but at least there's a voiceover, so I, I get to kind of, you know, figure out what I'm trying to do. All right. And, okay, so I want to describe this. Determine span of V1, V2. Uh, V1 is uh, 1, negative 1, 2. And V2 is equal to 2, negative 1, 3. Okay. Actually, this is the wrong problem. This is actually 34. Whoops. But whatever um okay how do we determine the span of this well y you just throw constants in front so this is c1 times that vector plus c2 times this vector um and so it spans then c1 plus 2c2 negative c1 minus c2 and 2c1 plus 3c2 so and that's the span. So, well, what is the span? Well, since C1 and C2 are linearly independent, right? Uh, not C1 and C2, V1 and V2, these vectors are linearly independent. You can eyeball this pretty much. Um, what does that mean? What do they span? Well, it means that these are like two vectors in three dimensional space. And for Math 114, then you know that any two vectors, we can determine the plane by taking its cross product. Well, yeah, that's essentially what the span of these two vectors is. It's going to be the plane determined by these two vectors because I can take any linear combination, right? Let's say this, this, and then that. Sorry, you can't see it. It's off the screen. But then I can hit any point on the plane just by taking a linear combination of these two vectors. So, yeah. Uh, so this spans a plane uh, in R3. Okay, cool. Super easy. Uh, the next one, I'll do another one. This was 4435. Same type of problem. V1 now is equal to 1, 2, negative 1. And V2 is equal to negative 2, negative 4, comma 2. And what do they span? Well, okay, if you do C1, 1, 2, negative 1, plus C2, negative 2, negative 4, 2. All right, then you get this vector, C1 minus 2, C2. 2c1 minus uh, 4c2 and c1 plus 2c2. However, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that uh, what happens if c1 uh, equals uh, what happens if c1 equals negative 2c2 uh, then you get that these two are the same thing, right? So if I choose my scalars wisely, I'll end up with the same darn vector. Yeah. Then you get the same darn vector. So what does that mean? That means that, oh, and you guys should have noticed this immediately, that this vector, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, 4, 2, they're actually the same vector. One's just, this isn't to scale, but one's just pointing this way, and then the other one is just pointing the opposite direction, but a little longer, right? And so, yeah, these two are the same vector, which means that you, you don't need to do this. The span is actually just, uh, span of V1 and V2 is actually just the span of one of them. So you can either choose C1 times 1, 2, negative 1, or C2 times the other vector. It doesn't matter, but this is actually going to be the span. And so what is this? Well, it's a scalar multiplying a vector. And what if that scalar then was time? Then you'd have time multiplying a vector. Well, that's a line, right? That's 114 stuff. This is, this is a line. Um, this is a line in R3. And so I think I'm going to actually cut this video here. I'm just going to have these two examples. Um, yeah, super easy if you have to determine the span of anything. Um, what you can do, 
Yeah, I mean, this is really the only way. You just have to realize if any of them are linearly independent or not. Um, yeah, I guess we haven't really talked about column space, so I can't really discuss that. But yeah, this is what you do. Super easy. Uh, we'll move on to the next problem, which is then um, for a separate video. But the next video, then, we'll talk about if a vector lies in a certain span. So, all right.